Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons discussions. But the special for this month, which is nope, November. No, no, no hearts. It is all things. It's nope. It's spooky and it's scary and it's things that you hate. That's okay. Uh, so uh, right off the bat, we already have our um, two guest stars out in the open. Um, and that's because I'm a bit on the run here today. But that is okay. We are still going to make it just fine. So, two guest stars I have today is uh, Josh, who has been with us before, Mr. Dungeon Master, all sort, all powerful, and very scary in his ways, and also Josh, who who is a in one of my other campaigns, um, a longtime Dungeons and Dragons fan, and hopefully you can handle the challenge that I have for you two tonight. You up for it? I hope so, too. I, I don't know what the question is. So, where that, And that is the point. So let me set the scene for you guys real quick right here. You and your party are are in the woods. You're, you're, you just finished looting a dungeon. Go figure. Uh, and you're heading back to town to celebrate your victory. However, in the moonlit path of the dark and spooky forest, you begin to hear the rustling of bushes as a giant, hideous, wolf-like creature steps out into the path in front of you. Not Jonah. <laughs> I hate you. Uh, no, it is a werewolf. Tall, big, scary. You and your party draw their weapons, ready for battle, but being the quite high intelligence modifier, you have a sudden realization, and you look around the group, and realize there isn't a single magical imbued person among you. No one has a magic item, no one has any type of magical powers whatsoever. You look in front of you at the, at the werewolf and realize this is going to be an interesting battle. So, the question today tonight is the first of all it is the first question that isn't a yes or no question tonight's question is what is the best way to kill a werewolf without magical methods now for those who aren't aware werewolves have this little annoying um little annoying uh, immunity to basically all damage, or not, I don't want to say all damage, because they are just immune to uh, bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Josh. No, that's correct. They're immune to bludgeoning, correct. to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage uh, from non-magical attacks, with an exception. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get into that, but that would be silver. Mm, that is true. Well, I'm going to actually take that out. You also don't have any silver weapons, okay. because okay. they remember we this is, so this, the question is basically, it's more of a, what's the best way? But also it's a, is there a way to kill a werewolf without silver or any type of magical related items? And that is the question. Well, I okay. suppose that makes its skin its immunity point, right? Hmm, sorry? So like, that makes its skin its immunity point, correct? That would be the assumption. Uh, I think it would probably be, if we're talking about like, lycanthropy as a curse, I'm assuming it's more magical than biological. There's lots of creatures within the Dungeons & Dragons lore uh, that would have um, uh, biological um, immunities, uh, such as uh, last time I was on we were ta talking about uh, how uh, if dragons are immune to their own uh, spit mm -hmm. styles or their own uh, breast styles uh, within themselves, which we kind of came to the conclusion it would depend on if it was biological or magical. Um, as far as lycanthropy goes, as far as a werewolf would go, I would argue that it would almost for sure be magical, simply that it wasn't mm -hmm. a biological uh, process that made them the way that yes. they are. Werewolves, I'll chime in here and say werewolves are like one of those things, like there's a couple of like, you know, mythological creatures and whatnot that you could argue, oh, it's some type of uh, biological state where they have evolved and mutated among the years. No, 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 werewolves are, it's a curse. 
and that's described many times as a curse. Like, you can make that argument with zombies and undead. That it's either some, it's a virus or it's some magical thing that raised it from the death, mm. from, uh, from into undeath. It's both ways. Werewolves, though, yeah, it's a, it is a curse. It kind, of, I, I don't know, does it say in the monster stat block? I'll probably throw it up there. I don't have it in front of me currently. You know, I probably could. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll go like this and I'll make it pop right here. Um, actually, I probably can look it up in front of me, and I probably will do that while, while I have this going on right here. But in their stat block, it does say a cursed being, correct? Yes, yeah, it is in fact a curse. It is not a, a disease. Um, I've actually discussed that quite recently with a couple other people, but uh, uh, <laughs> lycanthropy isn't actually a disease, uh, especially within... D and D. I mean, play it as you want to or see fit, depending on how you want your curses to work. But as far as it goes, um, as far as Wizards of the Coast is concerned, uh, it is a uh, magical curse. Uh, this means things like uh, uh, druids and pal paladins. Uh, I believe even monks, who eventually, within their um, kind of trees of abilities, eventually get things like immunity to poisons, immunity to mm -hmm. um, aging and diseases aren't actually immune to uh lycanthropy because it is a magical curse and not uh instead like a biological thing which a virus would be or a bacteria would be the bad news for those who think oh i can i can take on anything yeah well werewolves are still a problem yeah. and werewolves are, is one of my favorite monsters to go up against um and the terrors of them just recently became known to me as my wife uh, threw us into threw us into yeah they they met her before. Okay. Uh, my wife was recent th threw us into an encounter with wolves and werewolves and me being the fighter uh, level what level were we we're four right level four we three. were three I think during that yeah. combat yeah so so level three grappling fighter who just uses his fists to fight um yeah that didn't really work out too well for him but anyways getting off topic. What is there? Let's get it right out of the open. Is there some way to even do damage without any magical means? Like, let's say you're just like some type of fighter or or, 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 or a rogue and you don't have like magical weapons. Is there some way to damage a werewolf? Right. It, still has, it can still be damaged by toxins and stuff, right? Like, it, that's, that damage is totally separate than anything you have to hit it or stab it with. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. Uh, things such as, uh, well, uh, yeah, really anything that you could coat the blade with and enchant the blade with, and anything mm. like that, beyond the weapon itself being that magical, if you can manage to swing that, then yes, they are immune to things beyond the bludgeoning, slashing, piercing. Um, this would obviously make, like, spells very effective, but I'm assuming we're talking about a party of all melees or something along those yep. lines who don't have access to magic kind of generally as a concept. Um, yeah. Yeah, poisons would be the best way to do it, I would have to agree. Um, you'd have to argue about if they're still taking wounds and not damage for poison to enter the bloodstream, but I would assume a poison weapon, uh, at least for myself as a DM, a poison w weapon, the slash might heal immediately, but the poison that was on the blade may still do its damage uh, after that point. Um, to kind of circle back to... Uh, uh, Josh's like original point from b before, which is uh, like, is it uh, like just skin deep? Um, I'd argue the curse of it would be more of a um, a X Men Wolverine type uh, kind of healing factor. It's almost like it would be cut through. You could stab, you could punch, you could explode, but eventually everything's going to kind of come back together. Um, uh, cuts kind of heal themselves, so on and so forth. Uh, I I would think it does go deeper than skin, but with that being said, rules is written. Poisoning, I think, would definitely be uh, the ideal uh, way to do it. Uh, I, I'd also bring up as well, um, it's been kind of recently talked about on uh, forums like Reddit and other places, uh, uh, people throwing out the idea and arguing over if, uh, if werewolves can take fall damage, as that would be um oh. be uh like negative uh sorry uh like non-magical bludgeoning de damage i'd argue they could simply because it's not an attack that's doing the damage and if we are 
I guess, talking rules as written. The immunities they have are specifically for attacks. I'd say natural elements, you're not going to be immune to a tree falling on you, kind of depend, regardless of the curse, right? It might do lesser damage or something like that, but it kind of depends on the situation yeah. you're talking about there. Cool. Josh, let me, get, let me get your two cents on here. So I would say either a toxin or something that would strangle him because it's like he still needs to breathe, I assume. So some either way to cut off his air supply or poison him from the inside, um, I think would be the most effective. Like, if, you know, if you cover an arrow in poison and shoot at its mouth for a cold shot and you make it by some miracle, um, that would, I suppose, do continuous damage mm -hmm. uh, with the toxin inside of it. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me throw something out here. Let me throw something out here. Um, you should play devil's advocate, but the question, the, but there's you know different types of damage. I mean, and there's one damage that they probably can use, and that is fire damage. Pull out a torch and use it as a weapon or something. So, could that be a way? Can they take fire damage? Yeah, I'd assume so, because because I again, it's just the the physical aspects, the bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing that they do have immunities to. Um, I would assume, I I would say, or assume, yeah, if you were going to, uh, I don't know, touch it with a, I don't know, you say like a torch or hot fire poker or whatever, I would assume the fire damage would still be taken. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, again, I think you'd have to kind of go into it how you'd run it as a DM, um, because uh, these questions all kind of diverge into um, what you believe as the person running the table table but rules as written um if we just kind of wanted to go flat with how uh, they they were designed by wizards uh yeah i'd say really anything other than that w would work right uh, discharging a tesla coil would still give them a reasonable amount of electric damage poison fire um to josh's point before uh with strangulation drowning would be a fine one too um that kind of idea there right so I think, yeah, you definitely have to, it, y there would be very little or no way to do it uh, head to head. You would always have to find another way to do it if you didn't have the weapons available to make those attacks. So a fall, a fall from a height, um, yeah, suffocation, no matter what ways that, whether you're being kind of classic drowning or uh, getting cheeky with a bag of holding or whatever, right? But like, like that, th that'd be one of the other ways. Um, and then, yeah, uh, unconventional weapons, I'd guess. N not necessarily uh, like magical weapons, but unconventional, yeah. Just hitting them with a torch. Um, something, I'm, I'm assuming our, our artificers could have kind of the time of their lives coming up with other shit like that, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is in our campaign or is this a homebrew item that we found in ours, Josh. But I remember a um, it was a bag that was like a normal like like it looked like you could stick your head in it, right? Uh, and I can't remember which campaign this. I think this might have been in the one that Josh and I are in currently. But we found a bag, and it was just large enough to get someone's head in, and yeah. If you try to put that bag over someone's head, their head would just poof disappear, <laughs> just like that. And uh, I don't think we ever used it because we were afraid of where the head goes and what happens. But yeah, like crazy stuff like that. So okay, so we have an idea of yes, there is a way to kill werewolves non-magically. Now, what is the best way though? A flaming arrow with a poison on it at the same time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'd argue from from zero to a hundred, uh, quickest, most effective way would be yeah, I'd say probably suffocation. You'd find a way to drown it, sink it, something like those. Um, I think anything else, uh, as far as like like the weapon attacks go, yeah, poisons, fires, those will all work like just fine. But it's still to the effect of um, chipping away at its health instead of doing any like real uh, like strong damage. Um, I'd say yeah, things like strangulation, um, suffocation would work excellent. Um, I don't know about best, 
best would probably have to be like most instant would probably be like fall damage crush damage again depending on the dm depending on how they want to run um damage of that nature there so i'm gonna interrupt right here does this is this is i don't want to like sidetrack i just want to get this established because i uh we actually technically are right out of time um is crush and fall damage it's separate for damage because I always thought that those were just a severe, powerful form of bludgeoning damage. Right. Yeah. And see, it's not the damage it's immune to; it's damage from attacks, uh, which is kind of where uh, I think, oh. like word, like like within the rules as written wise, um, you'd kind of have a um, kind of a field day arguing over uh, kind of the semantics of that because you can say. Um, like yeah anything you could argue like well did he then if that's the case how semantics do you want to get if he's at the top of a tower falls takes 100 da dead damage did he trip and fall which isn't an attack was he pushed do you consider the push an attack and that's what's doing the damage it'd get into a whole bunch of semantics area uh if you kind of went down that road i think but cool. yeah Turn him into Deadpool at that point. Like make it into a healing factor, almost. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, that is basically what werewolves are depicted in this, is that they have some type of healing factor. But if you're going to put it like that, where it just says, you know, bludgeoning, piercing, and, and slashing damage from an attack, then, like you said, rules is written, that could be fair. Is that it's not, a, it's not an attack. But let's say I'm playing my fighter who can grapple, and can push, and you know, he's got, he's big and beefy, let's say I push him off a cliff. Mm. Technically, wouldn't that be an attack? Because That's exactly I push it, him right? And the difference between a tree falling on him as opposed to a tree being chopped onto him, right? I think it'd very much get into the semantics of what do you consider an, an attack as opposed to uh, natural damage, I guess we could coin it as uh, for the purposes of the argument. Natural damage, okay. Mm. Josh, let me, other, other, this Josh. Uh, what do you, let me get your two cents here. It depends on how much of a healing factor you make it versus how much you play strictly by the rules. That those three types yeah. are the only things that can do any damage. See, and I, I think, think it's, I think it's quite da dangerous to think of it as like exclusively a healing factor, only because like there are actual monsters out there with a healing factor. It's more of just like an immunity to the damage. Uh, but like it's always been in my mind. It's just that those kind of wounds are healed almost instantly, right? So it's you have to kind of toss it in between there, too. Um, but, yeah. Sorry, go on. No, that, basically that's it, exactly. <laughs> I, I have, I'm not an expert with the D&D, &D, uh, whatever, the, the forms of, like, words that you guys use to describe stuff. But I can say, as long as you consider it a curse just to those three things and not a healing factor... Then yeah, suffocation is definitely the fastest way. Mm. Mm. Josh, would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say definitely the most. Like, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say say uh, the fastest, but the most surefire. Like, mm -hmm. like, like anything else, you can kind of get into the semantics of the falling, the pushing, the whatever. I feel like there's no way that you can like really push around the term as far as like a suffocation goes. Everything has the amount of rounds it can hold its breath for, and then it's gonna die. And I don't feel like really any DM would have any issues kind of uh, working like through that. There, I feel like you're always gonna have. Um, two sides of the coin when it comes to a bunch of everything, but for sure suffocation would be your most surefire way, as I can't imagine any DM saying, no, it can't suffocate, right? <laughs> yeah, I was more, so, like, I'm thinking, like, um, like, the suffocation factor of it is, like, you can always rely on that. Like, poison, fire, the occasional tree or cliff nearby, you, that has to be something that you prepare, or is just randomly there like you're never gonna, you're not always gonna have a cliff you're not always gonna have a um you're not always gonna have a uh, tree nearby to crush it and there's no and well usually my opinion everyone carry a torch especially if you're a human um <laughs> if you don't have a torch or a tinderbox or something like that and if you're if you don't have a rogue in the group and the rogues have poison you have like you have to prepare for stuff like that mm -hmm. so you're not gonna have those things right off the bat all right. So, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for right now. 
So let me hear it. The so first of all, is there a way to kill a werewolf without magical means? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. And then what is the most effective way to kill said werewolf? Yeah, I'd I I I'd have to agree on drowning. I think like just most surefire uh, kind of no ifs, ands, or buts uh, way. There's quicker ways. Uh, I think there's pro probably more effective ways, but they all require a decent amount of uh, leniency from the DM or uh, discretion on their part, whereas drowning, suffocation, definitely the most uh, surefire way. Josh, would you agree? Yeah, agree. Uh, yeah, that's not because suffocation is a thing that will work basically on any DM that you come across. Mm hmm. Most of them, this is a really stickler, would be like, oh, they can, they can, I, I don't know, I'm not, yeah, just, I'm not, such a is it a bludgeoning attack if you close his throat? No, <laughs> no, because I, cause then it would be some, like, some type of form of grapple, right, yeah. at that point. All right, so, um, I'm just gonna throw rolls onto you, I hope you don't mind. So, Josh number one, the barbarian, is holding down the werewolf, as Josh number two, the rogue, has the werewolf's head in a type of judo uh <laughs> stranglehold as werewolf slowly the light leaves its eyes and collapses on the side of the trail <laughs> both of you dust yourselves off and you make your way to town for a fine drink and a good night's sleep congratulations you have beat the werewolf and won the campaign have a good night. no <laughs> uh all right all right this is very good so coming up with this question has been so difficult because i originally was like Oh, can werewolves damage each other? Right. Oh, can werewolves take fall damage or bludgeoning or, or fall damage or crushing damage? Oh, I think what was the what was the other one? I, I, there was something else that came up, but I think I originally came to this and I was like, okay, this is this will be a good this will be a good discussion right here. Um, thank you, Josh and Josh, for Absolutely. joining me tonight, and for all of you who are watching uh, watching this, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always i am rick quasar and it is nope november rejoice and remembrance Luba for all Hoon. things that make you say